Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power, and hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. Let's talk about Gideon for a while. I think all of us can relate to Gideon. Gideon is just this average dude, probably less than average. When God comes to him, sends him an angel to ask him to go fight against the Midianites, he's basically saying, are you kidding me? Me? This lowly guy? this weakling guy, and then has the cojones to actually test God three times before he goes and succeeds in this incredible battle, taking down Baal worshipers, or Baal, however you want to say it. Look at where we are in life. Look at the evil that is around us. The Baal worshipers, Don't you and I sometimes just think, well, I'm just one person in this lowly little family and I'm the lowliest one of my family. How in the world can I help in this battle? This is the mindset I want you all to have as I go through sharing this amazing biblical story. Okay, so again, Gideon is introduced while he's down in a pit threshing grain in a wine press, totally afraid of being caught. And then an angel of the Lord says to him, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. (laughs) And it's kind of funny. Come on. God is a funny God, mighty warrior. He's down in a pit hiding. He's not a mighty warrior, but that's okay. I think there's humor there. Maybe God didn't want to have humor there, but I'm going there. And then Gideon replies, "Uh, pardon me, my Lord, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And by the way, they've been completely oppressed for seven years. He continues on to say to the angel, where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. Okay, so. Gideon prepares a meal for the angel. It's some cake and some broth and some meat. And he puts it on this rock. And then, boom, the angel takes a staff and spews it all on fire, consuming the entire offering. And so that was the first test, right? I want to make sure that, God, you're with me. The second test excuse me, the second was Gideon putting out a fleece. It's a piece of sheepskin with the wool still attached. Then he asks God to cover the fleece with dew overnight, but leave the ground around it dry. So God did that. Then Gideon asks God to dampen the ground overnight with dew, but to leave the fleece dry. And God did that as well. So God was totally patient with Gideon. Because God chose him to defeat the Midianites. And Gideon gathered a huge army from the surrounding tribes, by the way. He went out there and he had a huge group of people that there would be victory, no doubt, from the number of people he had. But God reduced the number to only 300. Can you imagine? 300 going in and fighting against these evildoers evildoers. But at the end, they all went in with swords and then they had these jars that had torches and light inside. And so all together, 
They broke the jars to reveal the torches. They blew their trumpets and they shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. And this is in Judges 7, verse 20. Okay, so guess what? God caused the enemy, all these evil people, these Baal worshipers, to panic and turn on each other. Look at what is going on now. Can you not see that God is doing his work? We just have to share truth. We, okay, may not be battling with trumpets and lights in, in our little lanterns or whatever it is that they broke, these pottery things and all the light comes out. But you can see that truth is coming out in politics. Truth is coming out in culture. Truth is coming out in universities and schools and in some of the unconstitutional laws that we have in America. Truth is also coming out in terms of evil and what we are seeing with the sound of freedom and child trafficking and what is going on in the border. Truth is coming out in some of these quote unquote natural disasters. How can something like this happen? If you look across the world, why are there so many wildfires in concentrated places? Truth is coming out in the way in which America, and I know people listen to this podcast across the globe, sorry, Australia and Singapore and Ireland and UK and all you people in Europe. I, I'm not trying to not talk about your area, but I have to say in America for sure, we can see that there is no love for the people of this country. There's more love for people outside of this country, such as Ukraine, for example, perhaps more money laundering for these Baal war worshipers, excuse me. These are evil people. Remember, the reason people do evil is because they've blasphemed the Holy Spirit. Maybe not intentionally, but I'll tell you the ones that are in power definitely have cast out the Spirit of God at least the evil ones. Not everyone in power is evil. There are quite a few that are fighting the fight with God. But most have taken in evil spirits because they have cast out the Holy Spirit. That's the only unforgivable sin. If we recall in the Bible, we need God's Spirit within us. And when we cast it out, we don't have compassion or love or kindness or any of the fruits and gifts of the Holy Spirit. We change. Our hearts become all about ourselves. We become selfish, narcissistic. We can never be satisfied. The more we desire things like pleasure and power and money and lust, the more we want it, the more we need it, the more we sacrifice to the evil one, to the Baal worshipers, to Baphomet, to whoever, all of the Wiccans out there and the witchcraft and the spells that are cast are coming from evil spirits. They are pulling their power from below. So when you think of people who do these horrific things to the most innocent of God's creation, like children, babies, unborn babies. This is a ritual. It is a sacrifice of God's children to Satan. Same thing in the child trafficking, human trafficking, human slavery. It is happening and it's happening in a big number. And look at what God is doing. It is as if you and me are little Gideons out there sharing bits and pieces of truth. It's the light in our little pottery things. Maybe we're blowing the horns and crashing our pottery and shining the light so that all of the evil is confused and it's turning on each other. They're panicking. Can you not see it? 
I can see it clear as day. So let's continue to go to God. Let's not test God. I'm not sure Gideon did the right thing. I'm pretty sure he didn't with his three tests of God. But God said, okay, all right, buddy, (laughs) I'll give these to you. But then you get out there with my small little army and you conquer what these people are doing. And he did. So that's what I'd like us to focus on today. Let's tap into Gideon. Let's think about how fearful he was, how weak he was, but how he looked to God and he said, okay, you've proven to me through my three tests that you will be with me. Well, we don't need three tests. We know that in God's word, he is with us always right at this moment. So if you are afraid to share truth about what's going on in the world or share truth about Jesus and Catholicism and the sacraments and the power of the sacraments and why you believe what you believe. And if you are (laughs) also thinking about sharing the truth about what is incorrect and what is Baal worship or Molech worship, which is this transgender stuff, this sexualizing of children, this enslavement. This is evil stuff, people. We have to, again, put ourselves in Gideon's shoes and look at God and know that he wants to use us, the lowly, the meek. But what we have to do always and everywhere, we hear this every week at Mass, we need to give him thanks, we need to glorify him. It's our duty, it's our salvation, it is right and just And we have to keep God first in our life. So please make sure that you start your day in prayer. Look at the daily readings. We don't always cover them in my podcast. Sometimes I have other things that I'd like to share with you. But for the most part, if every single one of us read the readings every day, And we took out what God was talking to us. It could be a word, it could be a theme, it could be a verse. I think the world would change. At the very least, we should be doing that every Sunday. And then we will have the ability to love ourselves and love our neighbors as God commands us to. By the way, the first of the greatest commandments, it's called a commandment for a reason, isn't just a suggestion. It's not just, hey, you know what? You ought to pray. You ought to build that relationship with God. It's a commandment. It's the first one. And no idols shall you worship. By the way, the rest of the story of Gideon Uh, Maybe I'll share it another time, but he did make some golden thing and then they started worshiping that. And one of his sons turned really bad and he had 70, this specific son with this concubine that he married or had sex with or whatever you call it. (laughs) I don't know. Can you marry these 70 people? I'm sorry. He had 70 kids, maybe 70 sons. I'll have to go back and validate that. But regardless, that one son that came from the concubine relationship Killed them all. So yeah, it doesn't end that good. (laughs) But let's just focus on the beginning part where he was brought up from a lowly position to stand up. He was given courage and didn't have a whole lot of people around him to support him. But God was there and God worked through him. That's what we're going to ask right now. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. Should have put that on pause. Sorry, everyone. Okay. Holy Spirit, <laughs> we ask that you fill us today with love and joy and patience and courage and a tongue that we can bridle, but then we can also let loose when we need to share truth. 
Help us remember Gideon. And when it's time, help us to break that pottery and shine that light and blow that horn so that all of the evil panics because we are many Gideons. We are much more than 300, much more than 300 globally. So again, we ask for you to help us be your hands and feet, your words and deeds, where we step aside, where we live for the audience of one, Jesus Christ, and we don't have fear of blowback or cancellation or any retaliation on the truth with our family, with our friends, with our co-workers, with our church companions, with our neighbors. Now is the time, Lord. There's no testing from us. We believe, we trust that you are doing your work at your time because it's always perfect. But we are here as warriors, mighty warriors, as much as we may laugh at that, that we don't feel mighty. We know that we are mighty with you, Lord. Please come into our hearts today and help us to live in your spirit, seeing you, thanking you, glorifying you, talking with you, and receiving your grace all day long. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Mary, St. Joseph, all the holy angels up in heaven, please wrap around us. Guardian angel, guide us and lead us today. Make your messages clear. And please protect us from any evil that is trying to keep us silent and not warriors in our 24-hour journey today. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, Gideons, get on out there, be love, and speak truth with the heart. That's all we have to do today, but make sure that God is the center of your life because it will be super easy, super loving, super peaceful if you do. Okay, find something more with God today, soul, mind, and body, and have a blessed and inspired day.